This winter will be a time of great suffering. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. I don't know if you guys keep an ear on what's going on in the world around us, in our country, etc. If you do, you'll know what's going on. I'm not talking about mainstream media, you know, fake news. I'm talking about real sources, real news. We know we're being pushed towards world war. That's part of the agenda. Now it's Israel and Lebanon, and Greece and Turkey, and China and Taiwan, and Russia and Ukraine, and Belarus in there, and, and, and. Not to mention all the maybe cause and effect from that on our natural gas supplies, fuel supplies, nuclear reactors being placed on standby so that they're not blown up, etc. Now, a lot of it that's going on is over in Europe. I'm talking about Germany and stuff like that. Nord Stream Pipeline, you know, you guys have heard, I'm sure. But don't think that it's only going to happen there. Don't be like, oh yeah, that's just Europe. Let them, let them freeze. Because I'll tell you what. First off, we will probably send them stuff, which will mean we'll have less. And the trickle-down effects will reach us. Combined with, if this is a harsh winter or not, whatever. It's still winter. It's still more difficult in that time of year if, say, the power grid goes down. I don't know if you're aware of this, but our power grid, our critical infrastructure is pretty fragile. Pretty easy to take it down, seriously. And I don't know if you guys have heard about the whole Russian submarine thing and the nuclear torpedoes and stuff. That's a real threat, especially for the coastlines and or any other nuclear target. It seems like that's on the table. A lot of people, a lot of countries are talking about the nuclear option. Um, and some people have done a good job, certain YouTube channels. I forget, I just watched a video earlier today about the whole thing about nuclear winter. Oh, I believe it was popular preparedness. If you haven't checked out his channel, go check him out. Good dude, talking about good stuff there. I'm pretty sure it was him. I was watering the garden and I've listened, I put my cell phone in my pocket so I can listen to different videos, just try to, you know, see what's out there see what other people are talking about, etc. But he made a good point that nuclear winter is a falsehood. I mean, it's been disproven time and time again. It's not what they, act, you know, what they made it sound like once a long time ago. That is true. He, what he said is true. There's no such thing as nuclear winter. Now, there can be decreases in temperatures in certain locations due to um, radioactive clouds and or just clouds from conventional fires and other stuff that would go send, you know, smoke up in the atmosphere, cooling off a little bit. Eh. But it's not like the nuclear winter they talked about a long time ago. So, there will be a lot of suffering this winter, especially when people can't turn on the gas stove, turn on their electric heaters when the grid goes down. I'm pretty sure it's gonna go down this winter. There's just too many people talking about it. There's too much going on. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but it seems like they, meaning the powers that be, the ones that truly search out and try to um, control us as much as possible. It seems like really they're telling us what they're doing before they do it now. It's almost like they're compelled to tell us prior to something happening. It's almost like they're just like, you know, the little puppet masters, ha, 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 look at them, you know. Oh, hey, we're going to do this, ha, ha, ha. Watch them doing their dance on their little cell phones and going around, you know, sheeple, clueless, asleep. Um, you know, they're not even going to care. Nobody's going to even pay attention to what we just said. And then they do it. it. You know, a lot of things, it's coming down where it really seems like they're, war they're telling us. And not, it's not a warning because they know nobody's listening or they know that there, there are very few people out there listening. You and me are listening. Um, a preparedness community is listening because we care about these things. Um, and other people in other communities are also listening. I'm really worried. Well, 
I don't know if I use the term worried, I'm concerned about this winter. And not per personally my ability to get through it, because we have wood stove, we have propane tank that it'll pretty much last all year round, or all, a year anyway, just from a full load. And we have a full load. So uh, we've used very little of it. And I have alternate cooking and heating methods, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, but I am really concerned about others. I'm really concerned about people that live in cities. Um, and when the grid goes down and their ability to get food, water, clean sanitation, all that stuff. And then not to mention the rioting, looting, burning, all this stuff. Um, you know, coming up, November, elections. <laughs> I mean, it's a two-year cycle. We see it every two years. And side note, freedom seeds and defensive tools. Always the demand goes way up, prices go up, availability gets less. So you may want to think about that now. Are you squared away in that aspect? I am. So I'm not really worried about it. Am I going to buy some more seeds? Sure. More than just that, though, up here, you have to be mentally ready to do whatever it takes to survive. I heard some other video, I was, I was watching some other video, another video they were talking about uh, people are burning trash in Europe to keep warm already. And winter really hasn't even started. It's just started to cool off some because they don't have natural gas or they can't use coal because, you know, we got to save the planet. Well, I'll tell you what, what is the point of saving the planet if we're no longer here because we all die? God built this for us to use. Yes, to be wise stewards of. True. But we have to do what we have to do to stay alive or else there's no point in this beautiful green sphere or whatever you would think of it. Some people feel it's flat. Some people think it's round. I don't really care to me. I mean, I live here. This is where I am. I don't really care if it's flat or round or if it's hollow or what. It, there's a lot. I've, I've watched those videos and there are some good points on both sides. So anyway, that's a total, yeah, that's a rabbit hole. Um, there's a lot of interesting rabbit holes you can go down on YouTube and on the internet and stuff. <laughs> But um, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid that there will be some severe suffering. So what can we do about it? Because just talking about issues and talking about what can happen or what will happen um, is kind of pointless. So let's talk about what we can do about it. But first, before I forget, please subscribe, hit that thumbs up, share the videos, comment below. Um, and there's a little heart with a thanks in it, super thanks. If you feel like helping out the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, helping us do the stuff, get, you know, the stuff I can put up, better production quality stuff, um, maybe buy stuff that I can talk about. Um, I, yes, I do have companies contacting me constantly about doing reviews on stuff, but I just do a short little, I just five, 10 minute worth of, um, research on their products and it's all crap. I'm not even going to waste my time. And you know, I, like a solar generator. Okay. Well, would it cool, be cool to have one of those on hand, on the standby, even if it is crap, if it works a little tiny bit for a little while? Well, sure, but then I'll just have a bunch of crap laying around and I don't have that much space. I gotta fit food storage in my space. That's what I'm doing. So um, yeah, I just, I don't do that stuff. But you know, if I'm gonna research a product, buy it myself and then talk about it, that's, that's the best way to do it, I feel. Um, although I will maybe do reviews sometimes. I've done reviews in the past if, I feel the products are even worth to taking a look at. There are certain companies that if they approach me, I'd be like, Psh, heck yeah, <laughs> I'll do a review definitely because I know their products are good even though I would still do a full review. But anyway, that's all blah, 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 blah. Let's get rid of that stuff. Okay, so what can we do to prepare ourselves for winter? Alternate heating and alternate cooking methods and alternate ways to get water. Those are the big three. You gotta stay warm you gotta have proper shelter to keep yourself warm. So what are some things that you can get now that will ensure that you stay warm in this winter whether you have power or not? Well, number one on the list is blankets. Got some other good things on the list also, but blankets are great. Quilts, fleece blankets, 
I've talked about this in the past, wool blankets. Um, a lot of times at Goodwill or at other thrift stores, you can find those, um, those blankets that they use in the U-Haul trucks to wrap stuff in. You can find big bundles of those for a couple bucks and then you know bundle up in those. Think about our ancestors. Our ancestors, you know, they didn't have, they may have had a wood stove, but maybe when they're traveling or something like that, what'd they do? They slept out under the stars, they slept in a wagon. No, oh, excuse me, no heat source. They managed to live and stay through it, so we can too. People talk about hand and foot warmers. Well, those are really limited use. I mean, they only last a couple hours and stuff like that. Maybe, but I, I, I'd, I'd rather have things like tarps to keep yourself dry. Um, and a little bit of insulation. Keeping yourself dry is important. So then combined with the blankets, provide the warmth. So dry, warm environment. And what you can do in your house, say you lose power, what you should do is you should pull in to one room and it should be the highest room possible. So if you have a two-story house, go upstairs because heat rises, okay? And then what you should do is um, take those tarps, sheet plastic, blankets, whatever, and cover up all your windows. Seal them off really well. What I would personally do is I would use um, like a, um, a sheet plastic or tarp first, and then you could just take a stick with those staple guns, you know, like we use to put up uh, um, targets on trees and target stands and stuff, um, or one of those staple hammer things. And then, you know, staple it all up, seal it pretty well, and then put another blanket, put a blanket or two, or a quilt or a fleece or whatever around the window to help seal it in. All the door cracks around the doors, same thing. And then everybody sleep in that one room. Maybe even put a tent inside that room or build yourself a little tarp shelter inside that room. And then everybody get in sleeping bags, which is another item, sleeping bags. Um, and sleeping bags, and blankets are great. You can get them at thrift stores. Um, and I would say psh, any sleeping bags. I mean, if you want one, if you're gonna be like, I've talked a lot about Minutemen. If you're gonna be a Minuteman out and about doing this stuff, living out in here, surviving on patrol and stuff like that, you want a really good high quality sleeping bag and a little bivy um, sh shelter for it. Uh, but if you're in a structure, you know, even if you have some of the lesser um, sleeping bags, you can use sleeping bags, blankets, and all this stuff like that to make the whole thing work. Um, and so, I, like I was saying, inside a tent or a tarp shelter, and then you can use blankets. You can lay blankets over it to build yourself like a little igloo inside your room. And then that's a good way to stay warm. It'll help isolate the warmth and everybody just cuddles up together and sleeps in there. Um, don't forget also to put down some kind of pad. Um, if you just take your, um, take your mattress off your bed, if the largest one you have, set it down. Sleep on that. That's good insulation from the convection due to heat loss and the touching the floor. So you can do that. Um, like I talked about, blankets, tarps, sleeping bags. Um, also, what did people do in the past also? Heat up rocks and or those hot water bottles um, where you heat them up and then you keep them down by your feet in the bed or different methods like that. There's things like that you can do also. Um, there's also different kinds of space heaters. You can, there are little heaters that you can hook up to a little solar array outside, um, run it, run the cable outside, and it would pro provide power for a small heater. Don't use propane or those gas ones inside because of the fumes, and you don't want to wake up not waking up. You know what I mean? Okay, this is. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of suffering, so let's mitigate it by being pre prepared now. If you're here on this channel, you are of a preparedness mindset, so that's good. That's start number one. Um, now we just need to continue. We need to make sure that we're ready. Also, oh, also combined with that, also not just blankets and stuff, but layering systems for your body. Gloves, layering systems for gloves, wool liners with a shell um, outer, uh, base layers, intermediate layers, medium layers, shell layers, all these kind of things. Because then you can layer, you can bundle yourself up like in a, what, a Christmas story the you shoot your eye out or something I think it was where the kid was all bundled up and couldn't even walk. <laughs> Get like that and then crawl in a sleeping bag or crawl in a big pile of blankets. You will stay warm. 
it may not be as comfortable as what you're used to, but you'll survive. So think ahead, be proactive, not reactive. I love you guys. Have a wonderful day and blessings to you and yours.